Praise the Lord Church, hallelujah, I'm so happy and glad that I'm with you in this worship. And though I welcome you all to this Sunday service, I want you all to get separated from your work, what you're doing, and I want you to worship God today. You know, you have all heard the word of God last Sunday, a wonderful word of God, that Moses always wanted to have an encounter with God. He used to get separated from people. He used to take his tent and he used to pitch the tent, you know, separated far away from the people and he used to have an encounter. Today, if you feel like that, you want to have an encounter and worship God, I want you all just get separated from your work. Okay, leave your work for a moment and just worship God like never before. Yeah. 
Jesus Yes Lord Is in the game Teri mahima Gati rahe Ab sada जब तक जियो तेरी महिमा करता रहू खुदा जब तक जियो तेरी महिमा करता रहू खुदा जब से चुआ तूने मुझे नए सास जैसे फिर से आ गई जब से थामा हाथ तेरा बंदरा है जैसे फिर से खुल गई से छुआ तूने मुझे नया सास जैसे फिर से आ गई जब से थामा हाथ तेरा बंदरा है जैसे फिर से खुल गई तू ही प्रभु सदा जिंदगी तेरी महिमा गाती रहे अब सदा जब भी पुकारा मैंने तुझे मेरी हर दुआ को तूने ही सुना हरे कदम पर साथ रहा पास तुझको महसूस किया जब भी पुकारा मैंने तुझे मेरी हर दुआ को तूने ही सुना हरे कदम साधु रहा पास तुझको महसूस किया अब हो सना तेरी खुदा इस जिंदगी को तुझको दिया अब हो सना रहे अब सदा ये जिंदगी
तेरी महिमा गाती रहे अब सदा जब तक जियो तेरी महिमा करता रहू खुदा जब तक जियो तेरी महिमा करता रहू खुदा ये जिंदगी तेरी महिमा गाती रहे अब सदा ये जिंदगी ये जिंदगी तेरी महिमा गाती रहे अब सदा Greetings in the matchless name of Jesus. Wow, what an honor and privilege to come before you and speak to you today. I believe today God is going to speak to hearts and I pray that you will pay careful attention to what is spoken today because I believe God wants to teach us something. You know, the days are over for us to just come and hear a sermon and go back to our daily living i believe the lord wants us to reign in this life yes the bible tells us that we are to reign in life through christ jesus you know what reigning means it doesn't mean rich it doesn't mean become a billionaire it means that in every circumstance in every scenario you are more than a conqueror through christ jesus who strengthens you 
you know jesus said himself foxes have holes and birds have nests but the son of man has no place to lay his head jesus was not running after riches riches were running after jesus jesus was not running after people people were running after jesus to be healed to be ministered to be set free and that's what is called reigning in life because we are called to be just like our Jesus in his image manifest his image and his likeness on earth bring his kingdom on earth the reason i'm telling you today the reason i'm telling you this is because you may hear something today which you may be familiar with but i want you to understand that this message is critical for you because the lord spoke this to me and you and today we are going to by the holy spirit's power i pray that things that have kept you back for many many years which we have not understood we will understand today you know one of the main areas where the enemy has taken us down is because we have just come to hear the word when you just come to hear the word you go back to your same life but i believe god has given us his word so that we may seek out truths you know the bible says in deuteronomy 29 29 the secret things belong to the lord our god but the revealed things belong to us and our children's children so god has there are secret things but there are revealed things and those revealed things are for us to walk in so that we can move in power that we can move in the things of god and that we grow from glory to glory remember jesus didn't bring religion he bought a kingdom that means there are many things in this kingdom that we need to start living and operating in and the more we live and operate in the kingdom that we are from citizens we are citizens of a kingdom the more and more we'll begin to to see the kingdom of god come on this earth you know satan came to give jesus a kingdom he said he showed him all the kingdoms of the earth he said i'll give it to you but jesus was very clear he was not come to take this kingdom he was coming to bring another kingdom to displace this kingdom and get rid of it and that's what you and i are called for i believe truly when you hear this message today that god has put on my heart it has blessed me so much and i'm so glad to bring it to you but i need the holy spirit greatly to help me so that we can understand it so let us pray before we get into the word holy spirit i praise you and i thank you that you have been sent by my sweet jesus to help us to open the things of god to reveal it to make us know jesus better i depend on you sweet holy spirit you are my counselor my advocate my teacher my best friend and we just surrender ourselves right now in your presence lord we give ourselves to you lord help us to hear and understand and help us oh god to put it into practice in jesus mighty name i love you amen hallelujah i pray that you have your bibles with you because we are going to get into something exciting and i want to tell you even though you may have heard this message before do not take it lightly because i'm going to share something that you've not heard from it neither did i hear from it i pray god it will come out so just because you hear it don't leave this message and think oh i already know it no you do not know it every word of god has layers upon layers upon layers i believe today's message will make you sharp gone are the days when you can just hear a message and go back you know this has been one of the greatest problems of christianity and in church people come and hear a word and you see them the word bless them it spoke to them they were screaming and shouting amen but the next sunday they came back even at a lower level what happened from that sunday to the next sunday and that's what we're going to study about amen so i want you to go to your bibles and look at luke chapter 8 and this is where a large crowd was gathering and people came to jesus i'm reading from verse 4 
town after town he told this parable A farmer went out to sow seed as he was scattering the seed some fell along the path it was trampled on and the birds of the air ate it up some fell on rock and when it came up the plants withered because they had no moisture other seed fell among thorns which grew up and when it grew up with it and choked the plants still other seed fell on good soil it came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than what was sown when he had said this he called out he who has ears let him hear let him hear his disciples asked him what this parable meant meant he said the knowledge this is very important information the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of god has been given to you but to others i speak in parables so that those seeing they may not see though hearing they may not understand this is the meaning of the parable the seed is the word of god those along the path are the ones who hear and the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it but they have no root they believe for a while but in the time of testing they fall away the seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear but as they go on their way they are choked by life's world by life's world worries riches and treasures and they do not mature but seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word retain it and by persevering produce a crop wow i may not be able to explain this whole thing today but we are going to go as the lord leads us through this parable i want you to pay careful attention the lord jesus himself says this he says in luke chapter 10 uh, sorry luke chapter 8 verse 9 a 10 the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of god has been given to you but to others i speak in parables and he tells you the reason why so that those seeing they may not see and those hearing they may not understand we must understand church the, it is the father's good pleasure to reveal to us the secrets the mysteries of heaven remember i told you earlier deuteronomy 29 29 the secret things belong to god but the revealed things are for us and our children's children hallelujah the bible also tells you that we god has made us jesus has made us a kingdom of priests and kings unto god and to his father so you know that we are kings and priests Jesus has made us that through the new covenant and the bible also tells you in proverbs 25 verse 2 i believe that it is the glory of god to conceal a matter and it is the honor of a king to uncover it or to search it out there are many things in the word of god that is hidden but these are not hidden for you and me they are revealed to you and me so that we can take advantage of advantage of it and if we don't take advantage of it we will just come to hear the word of god and get entertained but this information is not for entertainment it is for life application this word is for life application i am speaking to many of you today if you understand this word that i'm going to speak to you from today you will understand remember this Whenever you don't understand the word of God the enemy has a way to take it away that's the word of God he just said anyone who doesn't understand the enemy comes and takes it away so remember i this sunday's message is to help you understand this message so this can never be taken away from you so that this remains with you so understand this We we'll start from Luke 11:11. 11. This is the meaning of the parable. And the Lord is clearly saying here, listen, I speak in parables not so that everyone can understand. 
i speak in it so that people hearing will not understand it and that under- and that you know seeing they may not see and hearing they may not hear so what is jesus is really saying he's saying listen i want you folks i want my church to have understanding to be able to see what i'm trying to tell you that there is another kingdom and it operates with different rules it operates with different principles it operates in different levels of glory and as you begin to understand it when you implement it on this realm it has the power to alter the natural circumstances listen to these words very carefully the secrets of the kingdom are given so that you can use them and alter the circumstances that you are in you know when jesus walked the earth he bought things from another kingdom and they altered the manifestation of this earthly realm he spoke to winds and winds would obey that is called exercising power knowledge understanding nobody speaks to winds have you any seen anybody speak to winds have you seen anybody speak to trees have you seen anybody walk on water no this bible is full of people doing things supernaturally and supernaturally simply means using a power from another realm to influence another realm remember you are citizens of heaven and that's why god gives you the keys a key is something that opens up something this you know in fact in another i don't know whether it's in matthew i think it's in matthew but he says this if you don't understand this parable you will not understand anything because this is the foundation stone of the kingdom and how it operates yes you have to pay careful attention to this parable because if you don't understand this you don't understand anything of how the whole kingdom works and so let us go to verse 11 This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. I just want you to stop and think about this. Think about it. If the seed is the starting point of any growth in your life, how much seed do you have in your life? If everything starts and grows only with seed, it is foolishness to even think that we can get something without a seed i am not even going i'm not explaining deep things i'm explaining natural things think about it this realm that you operate in operates with a seed if the seed is the word of god how much of the word of god are you carrying in your spirit man in your soul man how much of it because remember this whole kingdom works on the principle of seed and if you do not have seed you can be praying and praying and praying and watering and watering with your prayers and crying with your tears but there will be no fruit there will be no growth there will be no influence on this earthly realm why because you don't have seed you don't have the building block of God's kingdom remember the seed is the word of God are you trying to get something in the kingdom are you trying to get something in this christian life without a seed i want to tell you without a seed nothing will work in this realm or in the realm of the kingdom that you have been born because God has destined everything to operate from a seed why am i telling you this if you don't understand this you will continue to live life thinking that you god is going to bless you god is going to increase you but you do not understand that god always increases your store of seed whenever he has to bless you he increases your store of seed so that you may have a harvest So I want you to please understand take time to think how much of seed have you stored up 
because if you are expecting a harvest and there is no seed in your life that is absolute foolishness it's like a farmer going to he's waiting for a harvest but he's not done any planting he has not scattered any seed so remember this god has placed the seed to bear after its kind in all living creatures so every seed bears after its kind remember you are born again by god's incorruptible seed so there is the seed of god in you if you have been born again if you have made jesus christ your lord and the holy spirit has come within you you already carry his dna now the question is you have to start getting more and more into the word of god getting more and more seed remember every seed produces after its kind so every seed in this bible is a word because the bible says the seed is the word every seed bears after its kind that means if you need a seed say you have a problem in this realm of sickness you need to take a scripture the word of healing because it produces after its kind i hope you are understanding this bear with me i have to speak these things before we go into deeper things so before if you have a need any need in this realm you need the seed that will produce after its kind you can't take a seed of uh, you know uh, say financial prosperity and expect healing because it won't produce after its kind you need to take a scripture from isaiah 53 where it talks about surely he was wounded for my transgression bruised for my iniquity the chastisement of our peace was upon him by whose stripes we have been healed so you need to take that scripture because it produces after its kind remember here the word of god says in verse 12 those along the path are the ones who hear and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved in another translation it says that because they do not understand the devil is able to come and take the word from their hearts remember these are people who hear it but because they do not understand it it is taken away So I want you to understand the first and most important point is that God establishes covenant with seed. Everything that God did, he did he established covenant with seed. He spoke to seed. You look at the whole Old Testament. There are so many scriptures God established covenant with Abraham's seed, not his seeds, seed. You know, he blessed the seed he blessed he blessed abraham isaac and jacob he blessed their seed in fact the greatest battle is between seed between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman he said that you know the seed of woman is going to crush your head and you will bruise his heel and yes we are going to crush the head of satan You know in fact that is a prophecy for Jesus himself because he crushed the head of Satan and the devil bruised his heel on that cross but praise God the head of Satan has been crushed and all power and authority now rest with Jesus and he is bringing in his kingdom now he requires people who can learn and understand and operate I never understood what I am going to teach you today so pay close attention As the parable says the parable says that a man or a farmer went out and sowed seed As he was scattering the seed some fell along the path and it was trampled on and the birds of the air ate it I want you to understand this. We have a scene here where a farmer is scattering seed, okay? 
and some seed falls on you know the way some fall on rocky ground some fall on thorny places and some fall on fertile soil so we have four elements over here four or more we have a sower we have the act of sowing and scattering we have the seed we have the soil or the ground and we have the harvest so five elements in this whole parable very important the sower the scattering or the sowing the seed itself the different types of soil and the last is the harvest so a farmer could be a pastor a preacher evangelist a prophet right now i'm scattering seed the soil is the condition of your heart you know the bible says i think in hebrew 6 land that drinks in the rain and produces a harvest for those whom it is farmed in fact it says land that continually drinks the rain and produces a harvest for those whom it is farmed for that land will receive the blessing but land that produces thistles and thorns is in danger of being cursed so land that drinks in the rain i pray that your heart condition is a heart of learning a heart of understanding a heart of humility a heart of saying god whatever you teach me i want to put it into practice because remember one of the greatest follies of christian christendom is we come to church we learn and we never put into practice and that's why the devil has been taking us for a great ride imagine your father and my father wants to give us the keys with joy his good pleasure do you know what is good pleasure it is the father's good pleasure to give you the keys it means that access to every realm of heaven is open to you and me yet we see christians suffering going through such turmoil confusion depression anxiety worry why is that is it that the word of god is not true it's not working is it that god is keeping our blessing is it that god is not merciful no it is god who has great pleasure in giving us keys to open every door that this realm has locked up because your father got the keys and he's showing you his emotion he's saying listen if there's anyone i want to have give these keys it's you yes i'm speaking to you if there's any one god wants to give these keys it's you if whatever you're suffering from whatever area you're struggling in listen god today wants to give you that key so pay attention pay attention and promise yourself today and from today i am not going to read the bible i'm going to study it and i'm going to be careful to do what is written in it that means what you learn today you must begin to practice amen you must begin remember this is the biggest problem we hear the word of god it's like a man who builds his house on the sand because we keep hearing and we never implement so a house is on sand and when the problems come the house on the sand gets destroyed but god wants us not only to hear but to do because when you do you build your house on the rock the doing is where the root, roots grow the doing is where the foundation is laid the doing is where the rock comes into play and then when the famine when the nakedness when the sword when the temptation when the trials of life comes your house will be standing recently i went i love gardening so i went to pull out a plant you know it is very easy to pull out a plant that has just fallen on the ground it's very easy that's what the devil does to many people they have just begun to receive the word they have not spent time in it they have not meditated in it and so their root has not gone anywhere and so he's very easily able to uproot you cast you out with a little temptation little trial you're finished you don't know what to do you begin to even doubt god's word doubt his fellowship doubt his church you begin to question and you begin to go back to your own life 
but you try removing a plant that is gone deep i'm telling you even if it's the smallest plant you will have a huge trouble you know why even if you use all the force you know what is going to happen the plant is going to break it's going to break at the surface because right down is the root that has gone deep you may try to pull the plant it will not come out it will break and you leave with a branch or with a stem in your hand but by god's grace because the root is firm it will grow back listen whatever the enemy has taken from you god is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything you can think or imagine according to the power that is working within you and me so take courage no matter what you've lost this is your season to gain ground i have not even begun to really tell you what god has spoken to me but i want these facts to be established in your head you cannot be the first the first fact remember that i told you was the word of god is the seed is the word of god you cannot assume to be getting things in this realm or to be overcoming in this realm or to expect a harvest when you do not have a store of seed god's word is seed how much of that word do you carry because and remember every seed produces after its kind in the spiritual realm as well as in the natural realm that means you have to be careful to collect different types of seed so that it meets your need in different seasons and different times amen i'm going to leave it at that i have to move forward now there is something amazing that happens i want you to picture this when a farmer sows seed and we know the seed of god is the word of god right so when he sows seed we know that if the seed falls on good soil it will grow because that's what the word of god says but do you know between having seed and between it growing there is a process there is one step that we overlook which i overlooked also so say you have seed and say the soil is good there is still one process step that is missing and that step is implanting i am purposefully saying this word implanting because that's the word that the holy spirit gave me you know what it means to implant it means to take something and put it in you know they do implants in your body they you know when you have a heart attack they put a stent inside and they implant something inside and that grows with you and that protects you you know today they are looking at digital implants into your hand to make it easier to connect that's all rubbish but they put a lot of implants into natural bodies in the same way when you have seed and when you have good soil there is one step and that is implanting over here he talks about a sower scattering remember a sower could be me i'm scattering the word the word of god has come into your heart it's come into your mind sorry but for you to implant that seed into your life and for it to begin to bring results you need to implant it i hope you are understanding this so when you come to church the farmer is scattering seed that doesn't mean that it has gone inside the soil it just means that he scattered it to implant the word of god god has given you a tool remember the word of god is seed is the word of god so if seed is words what is the tool that god has given you to implant it i want to tell you the tool that is given you to implant seed is a tongue yes your tongue is the tool that you need to use to implant the seed deep in the soil remember 
the seed that is on the road the enemy can come and pick it up on the pathway amen but the seed that is implanted he cannot touch because that's deep hallelujah so you need to get from just hearing this message today you need to take the word the seed of god that i'm scattering and now it's up to you to implant it because where you implant it is very important because remember and what you implant which seed you implant is even more important because it produces after its kind you cannot take a seed of prosperity and expect healing it will not produce prosperity will produce after its kind healing seed will produce after its kind peace seed will produce after its kind joy will produce after its kind so every word of god is a seed and you need to be collecting and implanting those seeds or oh, there's something very beautiful that god says think about it he says that when a farmer implants a seed he doesn't go to keep checking whether it's growing or has it not grown or has it grown he doesn't spend sleepless nights he knows that once he's implanted it that growth will come you know i grew a plant i think 4 months ago i grew haldi and i totally forgot about it because it didn't come up at one point i even thought that you know maybe the seed died but can you believe after four months voila <laughs> suddenly we have a nice looking stem coming out what was happening you know this is the most beautiful par- part of the power of a seed you have to implant it and you then do not need to do anything because as long as you know that it was implanted and that under the soil there is a seed you can be sure that even if it takes 2 or 3 months or 4 months it is going to come up hallelujah because that's the power of a seed all i did was water it i never again dug it to find out whether it's working how good it is is it a good quality no 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 i first was very clear in my mind that this is the best quality seed i am you need to be very sure you're not playing with uh, toys here you're playing with the eternal word of god listen this is eternal word it can never fail to produce even seed on this earth some seed which they are manipulating can fail but this word is eternal it will work in any area and you know the best part this seed has the power to manipulate or to alter your physical your natural circumstances yes i'm telling you that's the beauty remember seed responds to both realms that's how god beautifully hid it most people do not realize that the word is a seed and god gives you an implanter it's your tongue the way you plant a seed is with your tongue you take the word of god and speak it into that situation so you got a situation of joblessness or you got a situation of lack or you got a situation of sickness you got a situation of strife you got a situation of no peace you take this word you are very careful to select the right seed remember what i told you and you carefully implant it in the word you implant it in your body you implant it in your mind you implant it in your heart how by speaking it with your tongue you know jesus the first thing when the holy spirit came he touched the tongue because remember if the tongue is not cleansed not healed you will be implanting wild destructive enemy seed in your life and this is what i want to try and tell you you know why you are suffering today you know why christians are suffering today you know why you are going through problems today it is because the enemy 
quietly implanted his seed into your soil and now you're fighting problems but you do not know the process from where it came do you know he used your own tongue not his tongue because he doesn't have authority to speak in your life he needs your tongue to do it because remember your tongue is an implanter that's why the enemy uses people but it is not people it is the tongue the word that they carry remember when you get hurt when you get rejected when you feel depressed if you backtrack to understand why you're feeling that way it is because somebody implanted a word and that word went inside and before you know it it starts producing after its kind oh my god i pray you understand this our god is trying to reveal to you why you have been suffering when there is a seed of hurt that the enemy implants into your life you begin to get hurt you begin to get feelings of hurt rejection seed of offense he carefully makes sure that it's implanted remember anything that does not get him that's why you have to be so careful because there are people roaming with tongues who have been offered who have offered their tongues to the enemy your tongue has to be offered to the lord god himself because it is this process that has been defeating you the enemy has come and given you thoughts but you have taken those thoughts and implanted it by your very confession you have spoken over your life you have accepted his thoughts listen i want you to take time today after this message and begin to evaluate why you feel this way why you feel sad why you feel oppressed why you have the wrong thoughts Listen it is okay to get thoughts it is another thing to implant those thoughts into you and then you will begin to feel that you are that person no no you are the righteousness of god you are the holiness of god you are the sanctification of god you are purchased by god you are redeemed from god you have been made in his image listen you your imagination needs to be so beautiful that not even one rotten fruit can come listen i'm not saying you won't have trials you'll have but who has stopped you from having good thoughts about yourself who has stopped you no one it's you who wake up every day and think miserably poorly because you are sitting with the wrong seed the enemy remember jesus gives you a parable a farmer sows seed and when he comes to look at his crops when the crop grows e- even weeds grow up or tares grow up and the people they come and they tell the owner they said didn't we plant good seed in the soil and the master of the house tells them a very critical piece of information he says listen while you were asleep the enemy sowed i want to speak that to you because you were asleep and you did not understand the power of implantation the enemy came and sowed into your life and now you have a field where while good crop is there there are also weeds choking the life of god listen it is because of our sleepiness our non alertness our you know uh, our lives which are not being led in the light of god We are leading casual lives. No, we have to put an end to all this. Now we have to lead strategic lives. We have to guard our conversations. We have to live lives like Jesus. Jesus was very shrewd. He was innocent as a lamb, but he was shrewd because he himself told us, "Be shrewd as a serpent and innocent as a lamb." Because he's sending you among wolves. Listen, you are among wolves that means you have to be twice as careful when to speak what to say which plant to uproot you need to be able to not only hear words you need to be able to see the heart behind the words remember there's a difference between discipline correction in the lord and there's a difference between somebody trying to put you down to rob your assignment 
to speak bad about you listen i want to tell you the enemy has been consistently doing this to us he's used your very tongue to implant seeds that are producing the life and the fruit you right now have if you are fed up with the fruit that you are having if you are fed up with the with the outcome of the way of life you're leading can you please consider your tongue can you please consider from today to implant the right seed which will produce after its kind into your life i'm going to give you some very practical examples so that you can understand how to do this and change your life i'm not going to leave you with a message i want to show you how to change it because i am telling you it is going to change a seed has to produce you do not have to ever worry if you will take time to do the implantation process carefully remember the implantation process is the most important because you have to meditate on the word remember these seeds are words words are carried by a tongue the tongue will implant but you have to be careful you number one have to believe that the word of god is eternal number two you have to come with it in faith and then implant it into your situation so say you have a problem i'm giving you a common problem say you have some sickness or disease or some ailment you have to take that disease take the word of god you can go to isaiah or you can go to uh one peter and i'm showing you how to do it so that you can go to one peter chapter 2 verse 24 and there he says he says over there he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed he himself he himself bore our sickness in his body on that tree so that we might live for righteousness by whose stripes you have been healed you need to ask what when why how you need to be totally convinced that this seed carries your solution this is where you have to be very sure of the seed you are choosing to implant you implant this seed in that sick body and you know once you have meditated and then you see how i broke it up he himself who he jesus himself bore my sickness in his body not anywhere in his body where in his body on that tree which tree the cross of calvary so that we might no longer live to unrighteousness by whose stripes we have been healed go slow with your seed you can't plant seed in a hurry nobody plants seed in a hurry if you want this seed to alter your circumstance meditate on it before you put it a sign a target to it because this seed has the power to destroy every other seed because this seed is eternal hallelujah this seed comes with a guarantee the 100% guaranteed crop it only requires a good soil now once you implant it with your words into the soil you no longer have to worry why this is a very critical step it's a step that most people forget you have to keep reminding yourself that a word has been implanted into my body no matter what doctors report come what people say how big the growth is how big the effect is how big the symptom is you must be sure that that word that you have implanted is doing the work and healing the body that means you got to water it remember you don't have to dig the seed but you got to water it how do you water it just once you draw, once you plant the seed you need to make sure you water it how do you water it you keep meditating over it you keep 
using your tongue to speak about it you keep blessing it you keep saying the right things don't start saying the wrong things because remember the implanter is the tongue the same tongue that you used to implant you can now use the same plant a uh, uh, tongue to remove and uproot that's why the bible says no weapon that's fashioned against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against you you shall refute you know why because death and life is in the power of the tongue i want you to understand this please understand this do you know if you have a dream right now that god has given you you can literally take that dead dream put it up on a wall write it take the right seed that needs to give it life and implant that seed into that dream and i'm telling you that dream which was once dead will come back to life do you know the same process god himself used to manifest jesus and if you look at it it's everywhere in the bible the angel gabriel comes to mary and he says blessed art you among women and what does he say he says you are going to conceive and have a child and she says how am i going to conceive because i am a virgin mary did not meditate on the word of god she had not read the prophet isaiah because if she had read she would have known that a virgin will conceive and she would have known it was her but she didn't know no big deal she said how can i i am a virgin the angel said michael came and told her he said listen the holy spirit shall come upon you and the power of the most high shall overshadow you and what is conceived in you shall be of god i want you to understand this what did michael do he bought the word why did he bring the word can you see for conception to take place he had to bring a specific word of conception he couldn't come and say you are so blessed you are so lovely god loves you he honors you and something beautiful is going to happen in your life no he came with a word of conception because the word produces after its kind he came and said listen this is the steps that are going to happen the holy spirit will come upon you power of god will overshadow you and conception is going to take place and sh- look what mary what she did for just like just like we learned in the parable farmer scatters he scattered the word but what did mary do she said beat unto me according to thy word she grabbed it at that point when the word of god is coming to you you are in a position to either accept it or reject it many people when the word comes they rece- ex- receive it or they reject it but she was wise she accepted it she took it she analyzed it she asked her questions she was satisfied and she said listen i know the natural process says you need to have a child like this but i take your word because i know this seed that you have given me can change my natural condition hallelujah she accepted the word and if you want to go to your bibles look at this is so important you know the word of god has such details if you look at mary what she did and you look at chapter 1 of luke and the angel okay i'm reading from luke chapter 1 the angel answered the holy spirit will come upon you the power of the most high will overshadow you so the holy one to be born will be called the son of god even elizabeth your relative is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be barren is in a 6 month for nothing is impossible with god shout that right now nothing is impossible with god nothing because god has given you the keys to the kingdom now look what she said i am the lord's servant mary answered made be unto me a, as you have said the angel left her now look at this is so critical at that time mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of judea where she entered zacharias home and greeted elizabeth If you read the King James version Mary got up in a haste and she walked away. 
you know why she went away because this word was going to change your whole destiny when god gives you a word that is going to change your life that men have spoken that you know you know that you know this has come from god you need to take that word and be with some people who are like minded guess what she doesn't sit a second in her own country because she must be knowing all the people will not understand it she runs to a righteous woman elizabeth The Bible tells you that Zacharias and Elizabeth were righteous people. In fact, Elizabeth was from the tribe of Levi, Aaron's tribe. So she ran to a woman who was a spirit woman who were righteous and were walking according to the ways of God. Remember, when go you are sowing seed and when you're taking and implanting and you have implanted the process you've completed the implantation process you need to be with like-minded people man you can't go to people who do not understand what you're carrying she ran to elizabeth and when elizabeth met her the baby in elizabeth jumped I pray that you find friends that when you meet them their spirit jumps and their dreams come alive when they see you don't go and meet people who when you go and tell them their dream they tell you how you can abort it how it will never succeed how will it fail how the present situation is so grim how there are no jobs listen The seed you are carrying is immortal, eternal and will alter the circumstances of the natural realm. You do not need to worry how it functions or how it produces. It will produce after its kind. You need to protect it. Look at Mary, she runs and protects that and goes to a woman who is a spiritual woman who is walking according to the ways of God. And guess what? When two women when these two women like minded women meet boom do you know mary was filled with the holy spirit because michael said that the spirit of god will come upon you and overshadow you when mary met elizabeth do you know there was a transfer of the anointing the anointing of the holy spirit from mary jumped onto elizabeth and elizabeth was filled with the holy spirit and began to prophesy This is what I'm telling you spirit filled destinies are opening you are moving into connections with spirit filled people cut off every association because remember the implanter is the tongue you have to be very careful of people with bad tongues gossipers slanderers people who have no idea of the kingdom that you have come in that you are birthed in they are going to talk negative they are going to talk only what they see smell taste and hear but you have been born you are hearing from another kingdom you are eating different food you are eating different drinking different milk eating different meat you are a citizen and an ambassador of another kingdom they will not understand you cannot understand you in fact the bible says no one can understand the things of the spiritual man because they are discerned spiritually don't think you can go and tell a person who is not in a spiritual kingdom of jesus the things of god and they are going to readily open up and say wow i understand it totally they are going to laugh at you they're going to say it can never happen you're not going to get that job but listen the seed of god has been given to you you need to know how to implant it you need to know next how to secure it that means you keep the seed from people who want to uproot it with their tongues be very careful of people who will come because remember Don't think the devil doesn't know that you are receiving critical information today. I can sense in the spirit right now people who have not known why their destinies have been shut up, why they are around the same mountain, why they are doing the same work, why they are imprisoned, why they are failures in their mind, why they are rejected, why they feel second and why they are abused. Listen, this is the seed 
and this is the implantation process the reason you are in the place you are is because the enemy took a lot of time to implant the right words into you words of rejection words of abuse words of being useless words of being ugly words he he sent people and what you did was get angry with the people but you never understood the process of implantation it happens through your tongue the devil either use somebody else's tongue or sometimes he has great candidates who use their own tongue against themselves but i refute every tongue that rises up against you today in the name of jesus from today you are going to be sharp you are going to be uh you know uh you are going to be enlightened and you are going to begin to live and walk in the fear of god no more you're going to be a sunday to sunday christian sermon to sermon you are going to hear this word and you are going to begin to use it i pray god you're listening to what i'm saying don't take the promise of god go and meet someone when they meet you the baby in them should jump jump alive don't go to somebody who begins to tell you how to abort your baby there are so many people who get visions from god words from god and they go and meet the wrong person and that person has the tongue to deplant what god has implanted from today watch your associations i am telling you be very careful because this is the number one reason the number one method the enemy has used remember he has no power over you all power is in jesus and jesus alone he needs you to use your power against you and he knows he has only thoughts the devil can speak over your life you can speak over your life you are the one who can take the word of god and speak it over your life the devil has no right to speak he has no voice over your life from today i pray that god is opening your mind to see the things that were spoken quietly by your own family by your own close members by your teachers by your church members yeah you can have some ugly seeds in the church <laughs> praise god for them love them from far but never ever 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 allow anybody to deplant listen after i got this revelation i am going to be so careful i am not going to remember that that parable i told you what did the master of the house say while you slept the enemy planted i hope you are understanding this god you and i have been sleeping while the enemy has been planting and then after 5 years after 3 months after 4 months you're wondering why am i in this mess you didn't understand the power of the seed the enemy only had to plant it you thought it was just a word it will not happen but you didn't realize that words are seeds and when he implanted that seed you thought because you don't know the power of the seed you thought it won't happen nothing will happen but you never knew once it's implanted that's why the bible tells you take every thought captive to the knowledge of god refute every tongue that rises up against you children of god i'm telling you you and i have to get sharp if you are not sharp in the spirit you are going to learn through bad mistakes i have learned through enough bad mistakes in my life not any more i will not have a single person come and speak the wrong words in front of me anymore i know for a fact i have learned today and you have learned today the power of how to give your dead dreams life by simply taking the right word after its kind meditating on it making sure it is the right word You know how you make sure when you go to buy seed and you go to buy fruits you examine it from all sides otherwise you'll end up with dirty seed you make sure it's from the right place it's guaranteed it's the right seed and that's meditation and then you implant it once you implant it you never have to implant it again the implantation process is final now you have to water it water it because you know hey I don't care what report I don't care what economy I don't care who says what I am faithfully watering my seed and guess what 
you may not see today you may not see tomorrow but do not forget that you implanted a seed because this is where the enemy will trick you he'll try to tell you it's so long nothing has happened and he'll try to take that same tongue that implanter to make you speak against it and deplant what you had planted and this process is continually happening in our lives day after day that's why many of the prophecies have not come to pass many of the things god spoke over your life have not come because you have taken the only tool your tongue and uprooted what god wanted to root i pray your you have received much today there's much to cover in this parable but i just wanted to talk to you about this today i'm going to leave you with another very powerful powerful principle that blew my mind god gives you words this bible is words remember if you are going to be successful in the kingdom and we are talking kingdom here because you and i want to be successful the information i'm now going to give you is principles to l- make your life reign in christ jesus remember you are going to start conquering every fear in christ jesus you are conquerors that means anything that you have been fearful you are going to conquer that very thing amen so what you need to understand to do anything victorious in your life you need this word but not only a man or a woman of god not only needs to have word he needs to have a tongue and i know most of you are thinking i got a tongue no i'm not talking about that if the word of god is seed which is spiritual you need to also have a spiritual tongue that is tongues remember this if you have the word of god but no tongues that means you're not a man or woman who is praying in tongues when you pray in tongues you speak mysteries you speak revelations i have always noticed this in my life when my heart is full of the word and then i pray in tongues all of a sudden a rema word comes out that means out of my store of seed in my heart suddenly the right word is pulled out for the right situation that's called tongues tongues breaks the written word into rema it brings the right word for that right season in your right time maybe even before time so if you are a man or woman of tongues and there's no word that also can be a problem you need to have a balance of both in your life that's why the bible tells you pray unceasingly pray in the spirit at all times pray for your brothers how can i pray for my brothers i don't know what they're going to pray in tongues you will pray for everybody in the right will of god so remember the word and tongues when these two come together you are going to be an explosive man and woman of god because now the word that is sown in your heart god will begin to remove the right seed remember we pray and we know not how we ought to pray but we pray in size and grows through the holy spirit who intercedes for us because he is the one who knows how to pray perfectly when we pray in the spirit we pray with the holy spirit and that is the watering remember i pray you have understood this is the most important this is a principle for life for life word of god praying in tongues word of god praying in tongues praying in tongues no word of god big problem you need to have word of god seed and a tongue which is anointed by the holy spirit so that the word of god comes alive i pray you've been blessed today and uh, you are going to begin to start using this technique of implantation and you will use it to destroy the works of the enemy in your life i pray this word has blessed you until we meet again next sunday please use it and write in your testimonies because i know there's going to be a great harvest from this day forth remember stay sharp stay alert watch and pray do not sleep a christian cannot be spiritually sleepy he needs to be spiritually alert because there's an enemy who's waiting for you to sleep waiting for you to get lukewarm waiting for you to put down your weapons so that he can implant his word or uproot the word that god implanted 
I know this is going to produce a harvest because I know the people who are watching are good soil. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Until next time, stay under the mighty hand of God. God bless. Thank you.